you guys again to another painting session in acrylics. Here I have a little sketch for you that I did. It's going to be another Florida painting. So uh, let's start off with the colors. I have Indian yellow, cad red medium, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and a gob of white. <clears throat> So we're going to get uh, started. I have some of these brushes. I'm using basically a lot of flat, some fan brush and some uh, liner. And uh, I have a number one filbert brush as well. It's pretty much all I'm going to need to start this painting. I don't need too much of a bigger brush. So we're going to start off with the sky, which uh, I used the cadmium, red, medium, and white, plus a little bit of Indian yellow to get this started. Now, these are new brushes that I'm using. They're um, from Jerry's Artorama. They're the Procryls. Really like them. <clears throat> I think you'd really enjoy them. And uh, just enough medium to make the paint, as you can see, is flowing pretty good. I'm not getting too much resistance. So I'm just starting off with this base layer, basically. So uh, as we go on, I will you will see that I will be adding other layers. I know some of you have been asking me about how do you do your clouds? How do you mix everything? And uh, how, do, how do I get them so well blended? Well, truth of the matter is, they're not really that well blended. Um, it's just, I give you that impression of it being blend, blended. So, uh, so at the bottom part here, I'm just, uh, just using ultramarine blue and a lizard crimson, which gives you a really nice purple, but I had to tone it down a little bit. In order to tone the color down, I you you could either use burnt umber, or in this case, what I did was just use a little bit of Indian yellow to go with that and enough white. Now the value is a little bit strong at this point, but there's a reason for that. As I will progress with this painting, you will see that uh, I will do some glazing over this purple color, which will make everything just blended in very well together so uh, <clears throat> now I'm using a little bit of the sky mix as well a little bit of ultramarine blue here and uh, burnt umber to do this water which again this is just a base coat alright and there will be some glazing over that so <clears throat> um, here I'm using a lot of techniques that you guys have been asking about as far as you know um, how do I do the clouds and some glazing? I've had a lot of questions about that. So this was a good opportunity to do this uh, on this painting. That's why I did a video of it. And uh, now I'm just putting in my darks. This is burnt umber, Indian yellow, and ultramarine blue. Now if I wanted a little bit darker, <clears throat> I would use a little bit of alizarin crimson as well in this. But it would be too much of a mix. You try not to mix more than three colors, because then things just get a little bit too muddy and just too too gray down. All right, so try to keep it at three colors. <clears throat> now make sure I just get it everywhere, and uh, because acrylics does not cover as well as oil, so you kind of have to go over it a little bit more. So. And I go a little bit everywhere. Now, I start off really dark. And you will see the reason for that. Why I'm doing this. Because once I start putting in the lighter tones on that, it will come off a lot better. I mean, I could have gone either way. I could have just started with a, uh, with a mid-tone. And then add the highlights and the darks afterwards. Or, you know, you could just start with the darks right off the bat and work to your highlights or your midtones and the highlights so either way so this is where the blending magic starts so here I actually used a different red I used the alizarin crimson uh, with a little bit of burnt umber just to tone it down a little bit so it wouldn't contrast too hard with uh, the base color <clears throat> so as you can see I'm not using really any blending mediums or anything like that. I'm just giving you this illusion of blending. And now I'm using that same color over the purple that I had just done earlier. So it almost makes it as if, you know, everything was blended together and uh and then I will add subtle 
subtle um how should i say this subtle hints of color to make it to make it look like a gradient uh like a, give it almost like a gradient from one color to the other but really there's really not that much of a gradient so I'm, i just use this uh this alizarin crimson and uh, a little bit of uh, uh burnt umber and just went over pretty much the whole sky except for the top part which you will see uh, in a minute what I'm gonna do with that so and uh, you know just make sure you use enough medium because what happens when I use in and when I say medium let me clarify that I mean use enough water on your brush because what that does is give you like a glaze effect over these dry colors. Now remember, acrylic dries pretty fast, so I can glaze over the colors right away. So that um, once the colors are dry, I just, you know, like this alizarin crimson that I just put down a few minutes ago, uh, I just glazed it over the base color of the clouds, which made that purple, reddish purple. Now it's not so much too stark of a purple, and I, and I, adding enough white to the color that it blended everything in together very well. So now I'm just adding nuances of broken color in the clouds which kind of ties in everything so you see it's not everything very well unified and blended. It looks that way but really it's not when you look at it up close. Um, that's just the way impressionism works. You know you is uh, makes your it tricks your brain into thinking that everything is blended together, but when it's really, really not. So well, I went over the sky again with uh, cadmium red, with a little bit of engine yellow and more white, um, <clears throat> to start, you know, mixing the colors a little bit and giving more of a gradient into the previous layers of colors that I've put in. And it almost looks like everything is blending very well and then I would use hints of more cadmium red uh, in that mixture just to you know almost like feather out the colors and right now this is pretty much like the ugly stage of the acrylic painting um, it looks like you know looks like nothing for now but as we progress you'll see how the picture will start to develop so now I'm just adding nuances of grays and how I did that was a little bit of ultramarine blue, uh, burnt umber, a lot of white and a little hint of uh, alizarin crimson, I mean a little very tiny hint and that's how I was able to make those gray nuances uh, in the clouds to give that effect. So now I'm just going over my base color on the background sky and this is just a basic mix that I used was just uh, ultramarine blue and burnt umber and uh, maybe just a hint of uh, Indian yellow that's all it was and uh, just going over that and now I'm pretty much sculpting the cloud so you know that's the best way I can describe it so I'm going to speed it up a little bit because otherwise you'll probably just get bored of watching every little stroke that I'm doing so <clears throat> so now I'm making all these little pocket holes in the sky just to give it that really that real feel now mind you if this was in oils uh, the blending would have been you know uh, quite different you know it would have had nice mix uh, nice blending and all that but uh, since this was a demo I just had to I wanted to do it in uh, an acrylics and uh, just to show you how you can do it in acrylics you don't have to blend it as well it's more of an impressionistic style and uh, how to use broken colors so and you could do the same thing with oils to tell you the truth once the oil starts setting up you could do broken colors just as well and give it that same look as the acrylic it's ex except it's just going to look a little bit more blended than uh, than what you see here so now we're working with going over the background of these bushes and I just basically use ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and a little bit of uh, Indian yellow to give a little bit of a greenish uh, color. And then uh, I'm going to start uh, working on the foreground grasses 
uh, using pretty much the same mixture minus uh, I use a little bit less of burnt umber and some white just so I could have a gradient of color <clears throat> so I'm just going you know uh, now with the reworking that whole tree tree line here uh, by using the same colors again just going over it like I said earlier acrylics is not like oils the covering power is not as great so you kind of have to go over layer by layer that's just the way it works with acrylics and uh, and to keep the whole painting in harmony I have not introduced any other colors now I'm still working with the same colors with cad yellow uh, cat I mean cad, not cad yellow Indian yellow cad red alizarin crimson ultramarine blue and burnt umber I'm just working within the confines of these colors eventually I will add cerulean blue to my palette so and uh, now I'm just using a small filbert like a number two I believe uh, and just I'm trying to figure out where I want to put this other tree because I wanted to add a slash pine to this and then later on decided against it you know sometimes when you overdo the painting it just it kind of ruins it so I'm trying to not to ruin this painting. I, I really like the way it's coming out and uh, don't want to ruin it. And uh, now I decided just to fill up the back edge of that tree. Um, I don't know why I just didn't like the way it, it was shaped earlier. So just working little small details. And the same thing for the trees. It's just Indian yellow, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of white. And then I vary it. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of alizarin crimson to gray down the color a little bit more. And now to differentiate the tree a little bit, I'm using a little bit of ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber to show some distance on that tree as well, like uh, to show the variation between foreground of the tree and the background of the tree, like branches are a little bit more distant than the, than the trees in front. And uh, just adding a little bit of sky holes, uh, close enough mixture <clears throat> on a tree here. And same thing now I'm just using my vine charcoal because I'm trying to map out exactly where that reflection is gonna go because if I freehand it and mess up good luck it's gonna be fun trying to fix that problem I've done that before and I regret it so now I just used to either you could use vine charcoal or you could use uh, a white pastel pencil that's the trick that I use usually it's a white pastel pencil but I couldn't find it so uh, I just use vine charcoal it's just as good and it's easier to erase if you have to just put a little bit of water on your brush and that's it you're you're good to go so now you see did you notice the color harmony now everything seems because uh, I'm not using too many colors together and so the painting all the everything just kind of fits together that's why they call it color harmony because the more color choices you have to put on your palette then you just get confused about what you want to use and you know and then things kind of kind of get out of hand you know so now I'm just using a white with just a tiny hint and I mean tiny hint of that Indian yellow to do this little egret and flight and uh, you know just put the little reflection now you could show the reflection if I did the reflection much lower than the bird then it will create that distance of the bird being high up above the water now I did it that the bird is kind of skimming the water and you will see that as we progress uh, it just it's just to show you guys this is another thing about perspective to show a sense of perspective if I did the reflection a little bit closer to the bird that would indicate to the eye that the water the, the, the bird is closer to the water than what you see but I, I gave it enough distance between the bird and the reflection to say well the bird is kind of skimming a little bit higher and it gives the whole picture a sense of perspective of uh, height distance and uh, size all together now I'm just adding little nuances of birds in the background here just you know a bunch of birds feeding in the after and you really don't have to be uh, detailed about this I'm not trying to be detailed all I'm doing is just giving you an impression a snapshot of hey there's birds back there I mean the only thing to make it look a little bit more realistic as you can see here is I'm adding little uh, not shadow lines but little reflections of the birds 
and on how to do this reflection now make sure that when you do your brush you put enough water on that paint that when you put a dab of the paint you're able to smear it with your finger okay and uh, you will see I'll give you a nice little sense of reflection uh, like very very nice subtle peaceful look there you go just like I did right there just make sure you have enough that the paint is not too dry on your brush when you're doing this there you go slide it down again now it's not often that I do put lightning in my paintings most of you have been following me for a long time I hardly ever do but this has to be like the second painting I ever did that with so I'm just using a liner brush and uh, just looked up some lightning pictures to see you know the general form and uh, how lightning uh, looks and branches out <coughs> excuse me so I thought it was cool I, I, I was hesitant initially but I'm happy that I did it so now I'm just basically trying to copy the form of the lightning just to give it a suggestion of reflection in the water don't have to be exact just you know like close enough and make sure when you do this with the liner brush that your paint is wet enough all right uh, almost like a almost like a glaze because you want it to go smoothly when you're doing fine brush work like that because if you if you put on the paint like a little bit too dry and it's almost like dry brushing man you're gonna run into trouble and you're gonna have to clean that mess up eventually so make sure your your paint is wet enough so and like I said the only medium I use in this is water I don't use glazing mediums or anything else like that all my paintings all I ever use is water so <clears throat> now just sign off my name and uh, call it a complete painting so I hope you guys really like the painting and uh, if you have any questions leave them in the comment section and I will try to answer them for you and thank you again for watching folks hope you guys have a great day